Ben. I have a lesson prepared. <laughs> but I'm sensitive to what Holy Spirit wants to do. And so I will begin while I prepare but then will allow Holy Spirit to move and shift to meet the needs of the people. I have this thing about, let's turn me down just a little bit, about being sensitive to Holy Spirit because he knows what your needs are. Well, just follow Holy Spirit. Psalms 55. Verse number 22. Psalms 55 verse 22 says, Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. It's not another man or another woman that is to sustain you. God says that he will take care of you. Now, for those of you who are struggling, you know, trying to make it and trying to make ends meet. And you may be doing things to make that happen. God is saying he will sustain you. He'll take care of you. Well, you won't need assistance from any man. Whoever that's for. James chapter 2. James chapter number 2. A concern of mine as pastor is that people just come to church because it's Sunday. And they are not applying the word of God to their lives. We as believers must be more than just hearers of the word. You must be doers. James chapter 2, verse 17. James 2, verse 17. Even so, faith, if it had not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith. I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. The Message Bible puts it this way. Isn't it obvious that God talk without God acts is outrageous nonsense? I can already hear one of you agreeing by saying, it sounds good. You take care of the faith department, I'll handle the works department. Not so fast. You can no more show me your works apart from your faith than I can show you my faith apart from my works. Faith and works. Works and faith fit together, hand in glove. Many people hear the word of God, but don't put any action behind what they've heard. And there has to come a time in your life where you not only hear God's word, but you become a doer of God's word. 
Your faith and your works must go hand in glove. And so it is a concern of mine that many people are hearing the word of faith, Jacob, but not operating their faith. It sounds good that I'm of faith. But the writer says it's nonsense if you're not doing anything. If you believe that God is your healer because he have declared in his word that by his stripes you are healed, then your actions must demonstrate that you believe that God's word is true, that you are healed. And it's nonsense for you to come and say, well, <laughs> I don't believe God's word when you say you do. And there's no demonstration. Faith is more than just what we named the church. <laughs> Amen. It's more than us just saying faith, Christian center church. Amen. It's a lifestyle. And he say, first, faith without works is dead. Now, so that you would understand what God is trying to say, faith is a law that will work for anybody who works it. And God has set up order in the earth, laws in the earth, that if you would learn how to hear first of all the word then apply the word to your life you will see it work because it's a law it's a principle based upon a predictable outcome faith has it because it's a law that is a predictable outcome when I operate in it for instance Gravity is a law, and it doesn't matter who you are, the law of gravity will work. The law of gravity says that if you jump off this building, you will come down 32 feet per second before you hit the ground. It doesn't matter what your weight is, it doesn't matter what your height is, it doesn't matter what nationality you are, if you jump off of a tall building, you're coming down 32 feet per second. It's a law. That is a predictable outcome if you work that law. The law of sowing and reaping. It's a law. Whatever I sow, that's what I'm going to reap because God set it as a law. And many of you are not operating in that law because you are skeptical well, if it's going to work. Just like God set the law of gravity in place, God set the law of sowing and reaping in place that if, you're going, if you operate gravity, 32, seconds per minute, per, uh, 32, second, 32 feet per second, you're going to fall. The law of, uh, of sowing and reaping says if you sow, you're going to reap. It's a law. That is a predictable outcome. It's a law. Somebody says it's a law. And many of you are not operating the principles of God's word because you, you're not sure. You're not sure whether it's going to work. Is, is, is it really going to work for me? My background, my education, where I come from? And God is saying, listen, tell my people, these are laws that I've set in order. And they will work. The law of faith will work for you. It will. You know why? Because God said that faith, the law of faith, pleases him. And when you take God at his word and apply it to your life, God said you will have a predictable outcome for your life. Oh, my God. So you mean to tell me, Pastor, I can predict by operating in the word of God what's going to happen to me? Yes, you can. Because it is a law. Somebody say it's a law. It's a law. 
and it doesn't matter who you are, that if you would just operate in the laws of God, the principles of God, you will have a predictable outcome. Amen. You don't have to guess anymore. You don't have to worry anymore or wonder anymore. If you operate in the principles of God's word, you can know for certain that you're going to have what God said. Because it is a law. Oh. There is a law of forgiveness. When you forgive, the law says others will forgive you. Uh-oh. And some of you don't want to function in the law when it comes down to you forgiving others. But the law says that the two go hand in hand. As you forgive, then you will be forgiven. It's a law. Somebody say it's a law. How is it that we can see God's word Sunday after Sunday and yet don't want to operate in it to receive the predicted outcome for our lives? And we want to wonder as if God is not on the throne anymore. Yes, he is, but he placed laws in place for you to follow to get the predictable outcome that he promised you. And some of you are still harboring unforgiveness in your heart toward your father. Harboring unforgiveness against your, your, your brothers or your sisters. And God says they cannot function in the law. I received that, babe. Thank you so much. I re- If you don't function in the law of God, you won't have the promise that he made to you. But it's all about your faith. Go to Matthew chapter 9. It is not anybody that's, let me see how I can put this. Nobody has the ability to keep you down. Nobody has the power to keep God's promises from you. It's according to your faith. I don't care what it is. You need to hear your man of God today. Because some of you are are questioning God about whether or not it's going to come to me or not. It's a law. It's a predictable outcome. I know it's coming. Because God said it was. And all I have to do is just stand in faith for the manifested promise for my life. But it's according to your faith. It's according to your faith. And it's according to your faith. It's all about your faith. It's not about pastor's faith. It's about your faith. Can you believe God? You're in Matthew chapter 9, verse 29, what it says. Read it out loud. Verse 29, he touched, he touched their eyes, and he said what? He said what? According to whose faith? Then he said what? Oh, hold on a second. So he said, according to your faith, blind man. It's not whether you go to the eye doctor. It's according to your faith. And he said, whatever your faith is, be it unto you. And some of you, some, it amazes me how we want to connect everybody else's faith, but you don't want to use your faith. And he said, according to your faith, be it unto you. Be it unto you. Mm. It's a law. It's a predictable outcome. And see, what many believers have to do is make a choice to operate in faith. Yeah? You got to make a choice today. You can see the man, you can see in other people's lives the word of God manifesting, but you got to make a choice that you're going to operate your faith. Now it's a conscious choice. Something that you're going to have to do on purpose. Not because you have an emotional feeling in church. Amen. Not because the back of your, the hairs on the back of your neck stood up. But you're going to make a conscious decision that this is the word of God and I'm going to operate in it. I'm going to operate the law of faith 
just like I operate the law of gravity. You got to make a conscious choice on that. Secondly, you must, it's a critical choice. It's a critical choice. And it has life-changing implications with it when you make this choice to operate the law of faith. Yeah, because it, it, it can change your marriage. It could change your family. It can even change your finances. If you choose to operate in the law of faith. You know, people, I, they say, well, Pastor Sharp, you're always talking about faith because this is where it starts at, right here. This is, this is, this is, the, this is where the rubber meets the road. Because without it, you can't, you, can't, you can't. Hebrews 11, 6 says, you can't please God. And so as you hear me today, don't just hear what I say. Hear what the Spirit of God is saying. It's a critical choice for you to operate the law of faith. Because they got so many implications. Implications for your children. Implications for your relationships. Implications for your health and healing. So many implications. But you got to make the choice. Now it's going to be a courageous choice when you do make it. Because you will encounter persecution. What do you mean you're going to operate in the law of faith? That's persecution. People are going to talk about you. But just remember what the Bible says. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus, they shall suffer persecution. You're not exempt from persecution when you get saved, I'm telling you. If you've been served that lie that says that once you get saved, everything's going to be all right. You have an adversary that's trying to kill you. So you're going to be persecuted. You're going to be persecuted because you have made a choice, John, that I'm going to live a lifestyle of faith. Yes, you will. It's a consistent choice. Even when you don't feel like it, you got to operate the laws of faith. <laughs> Amen? Yeah, the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. In other words, I'm not concerned about my feelings. Because my feelings going to change. I'm operating the law of faith because I know it's going to work. Listen to me now. I'm, I'm telling you this is from the mouth of God. That you got to understand that, look, I don't care how old you are or how young you are. If you learn how to operate in the law of faith, you're going to see God do some special things in your life. Man, how, how much I, I yearn to have learned this principle when I was young. If only somebody would have taught me this principle of the law of faith when I was younger. Oh, where would I be if, I, if somebody would have took the time instead of trying to make me feel good, but just systematically taught me the law of faith? Because it has so many life-changing implications to it. But it's a consistent choice. And not only that, but it's a captivating choice. Because when people see me living the law of faith, it becomes a magnetic force to draw them to me. So that I can give them my testimony of where I was and where I am now. Amen. Oh, yeah, it's a, it's a magnetic force because people know where you were. And because you have chosen to operate the law of faith, amen, that things have changed in your life. Yeah? <laughs> now, watch this now. You have to hear <laughs> the word of God in order that your life changes. Because the Bible says that faith cometh what? By hearing. By hearing and what? Now watch this. What I hear will influence what I think. See, this is why the law of faith is so important. Because what I hear will influence how I think. Why do you think these folk act indifferent? 
because of what they hear. They hear this, this music that changes their mind toward authority. Don't listen to authority. Don't listen to your mama. Don't listen to your daddy. Why? And so they hear that over and over again, and you wonder why your children are acting indifferent. Because what you hear will influence how you think. And don't just leave it for the children because some of you are acting indifferent. You can hear the word of God and the law of faith, but still don't apply it and still not change how you think. That's why he says to renew our minds. And that's why he said the devil is trying to blind your mind, blind how you think. And he feeds you this junk so that how you, what you hear is going to affect how you think. And how you think, hush this now, it's going to change how, you, how your emotions, how you respond to things emotionally. And that's why so many people are jacked up in church. Because they, they think, oh Lord, well, listen to me. And whoever this is for, you just got to receive it and just, just ponder what the Spirit of God is going to say. You've heard your mother say that your dad was not there for you. And so because that's what's in your mind now, your emotions go against your father. And so now every time you see your father, you have an emotional reaction to him because of what you heard. And you don't even know if it was true or not. Your parents could have been beefing with one another. And you heard it over and over that he was no good. He was never here for you. And you don't even know the, the, the real reason. But now how you think affects your emotions. And then your emotions are going to affect your choices, <laughs> the decisions you make in life. Now, when God sends you a good man, because of how you thought about your daddy and how your emotions are affected by what he did or what you thought he did. Now, when God sends you a good man, you throw him out. Because he looks like your daddy. And it's going to affect your decision. Everything, I mean, everything. That's why it's so important that you hear the word of God. Because if you don't change how you think, it's going to affect how you feel. And how you feel is going to affect the decisions that you make. How many times have you made a decision based upon how you feel? I don't feel... Some of you didn't feel like coming to church today. But you got to get beyond how you feel and make a conscious decision that, God, I'm, I'm going to operate this law of faith. And every decision that you make is going to lead to an action. Every decision. See, see that? Jesus said this. Whoever has an ear, let him hear what thus said the Lord. Because if I hear the word of God, if I hear about the law of faith, I can change my situation. See, that's what faith is all about, changing your situation. Because everything negative in your life, God got an answer to it. And all I got to do is just hear what God says. If I got an ear for it. I got to have an ear for hearing the things of God. Not only the physical ears, but my spirit man ear. I got to, see, see, that's when you hear, I'm telling you. Hearing God, hearing God is so easy. I mean, it just, it just bears witness with your soul that this is God. And so when I hear God, when I, when I, when I hear God, it's going to cause me to have an action, something that I have to do. And that's what the law of faith is. Look, not just hearing the word, but, but producing, having, having action behind the word. And see, once I hear, once I, okay, watch this, watch this. 
You have the ability right now to regulate your emotions. Right now, I, 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 not, not in the sweet by and by lesson, right now, you have the ability to set your own emotions. Right now, I don't care what it is. Right now, you can set your emotions about your mate. I don't love her anymore. You can set that emotion. What? You can set it right now and say, I love this woman. I know, I know, look, she might not be the best person you can get along with right now, but you can set your affection and say, I love this woman with all my heart. And I said it. I don't care how she acts, I said it that way. I set my affections toward my husband. He might not come home when you want him to come home, but you can set your affections on it. Set it. You don't have to feel like, I feel all alone. No, you said it that way. Oh, Jesus, Lord, let me come off. Let me come off. Ooh, let me come off. But my emotions are going to affect my decisions. My decisions are going to affect my actions. And it's going to cause a habit to be formed. A habit. See, I habitually trust God. Because I've heard his word. I've changed how I thought. I, I, I changed my way to his way. So what I think don't even matter anymore if it's not based upon the word of God. Oh, let me say this by the Spirit of God. See, some, see, some of y'all need to pull down the strongholds. Come on. Come on. Yeah. See, see, there's some stuff It's calcified in your, in your mind. Y- y'all go to the dentist. That dentist have this little tool. It's like a little hook. And they tell you to open your mouth. And you thought you brushed real good. You thought you, I mean, you got all in the back and everything, all, and then all of a sudden they put that little device in your mouth to pull away the calcium around your teeth. And that is how some of you are in your mind. Your mind has been calcified by the junk of this world. Yeah. I mean, you got so much stuff in there that it's preventing the... Uh, The word of God from taking root in your life. And the Bible says you got to pull down a stronghold. That that, that little device don't, well, I tell you, every time I go to the dentist, it's like, man, I, well, look, you got to, do you really got to put that in my mouth? Because it's not a, it's not a, it's not a happy feeling. But I know that if I want to, healthy mouth. Amen. This is going to cause results to come in my life. Just like you must make the decision that if I want a healthy mind, I got to operate in the law of faith by hearing the word of God over and over and over again. Now, it it bothered me. It bothered me last week. Let me tell y'all something. It bothered me last week that uh, I, I, I made the appeal for those who had, uh, who, who had, uh, was, was having health challenges. Uh, and I don't mind praying for you, but this is, this is what bothered me. I ask you to go and purchase a CD series on divine healing so that you can hear the word of God so it can change your thinking. Amen. Amen. But no, you want the easy route. Pastor just lay hands on me, speak a word over me. But even once I speak a word, if you don't have enough word in you, the symptoms are going to come back. And you're going to be back at the altar again. But if you know the word of God, if you know the law of faith, it's according to your faith. And so people didn't even buy the series. As if, as if I just wanted you to go get the series just to get it. I'm trying to get word in you so that you can operate the law of faith because it has a predictable outcome. I ask you to to get the series on uh, controlling the tongue. No, pastor, just lay your hands on me and my tongue will be right. But the Bible said faith cometh by hearing, and hearing, and hearing, and hearing. You're not going to change if you don't hear the word. That's right, that's right, that's right. 
you're going to keep on operating in the same junk you've been in because you don't hear the word of God. And so it bothered me. It bothered me because I asked, I asked, I say, how many people came in and bought a series? And I asked myself, how many people did I pray for? How many people I extended my, look, when I pray for you, it drains me because of what God is pouring through me. And you, and I say, I, I say, how many people bought the CD? They say none. I say none. None? Not, not one of the people who I came, who came up and I prayed for. Not one of the people who have a loved one that's sick. Not one. You mean to tell me that they don't want to hear the word of God in order to change the condition, the environment that they're in? And so what God, what, 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 what I took from it is, you, you really don't want this. Because the law of faith will work for you. It is a predictable outcome. The Bible says that the word of God is like medicine to our souls. Oh, my God. So, I look, just like the doctor prescribes a particular medication. Okay, okay, watch this, watch this, watch this. You would take the advice of a doctor who's practicing on you. And if one medicine don't work, he'd take you off of that one and put you on another medication. And he don't know how, you gonna resp- how your body going to respond to that medication. But I'm telling you, as your man of God, that the medication that I'm prescribing is from God himself. And that medication has a predictable outcome to change your life. (laughs) And yet, you won't even go to the pharmacy and get the the prescription. You won't even go to the pharmacy to get the prescription to change your life. Why? 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 Why don't you want to know? Why don't you want to operate in the law of faith? Ask yourself why. Could it be that you just don't want to change? You like everybody having a pity party with you. You like the misery. You like when folk just comfort you. Why don't you be victorious and let them watch you be walk in divine health or healing or whatever God has for you? I mean, think about it for a second, man. Come on, come on. It's not just about showing up to church. It's not about showing up to church, man. I'm telling you. See, because what I hear is going to affect my emotions. My emotions are going to affect my decisions. My decisions are going to affect my actions. My actions are going to produce a habit. And then the habit is going to change my character. Could it be that that's why people don't want the medicine of God's word? Because they don't want that character change? They want to stay the same way they are. And yet God wants to change it. He wants to change your character. I spoke to the men this morning about being an example. God desires for us all to be examples. Because we're losing generation after generation after generation. Because they don't see a, 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 a godly picture of what it should be. And so the question is to you, could somebody follow you toward God? See, because if I hear the word of God, I got to change. I got to change. That's that. That's that's. that's there's no other choice but to change. I got to change. You, you got to change once you hear the word of God. And for those of you who are sitting here listening to me, you're like, oh, yeah, Pastor Sharp, are you almost through yet? What time is it? 
it's not, it's, that's not the right order of service that you did today. I mean, my God. Sister Gwen never got up and gave her a seat of faith. I'm, try, I'm trying to change your destiny. You, you talking about a, what time is it? You didn't say that last night when you were at the club. <laughs> Once I make a quality choice, it automatically positions me to become all that God wants me to be. When I make the quality choice to operate the law of faith, it automatically positions me to become all that God has designed me to be. See, right now, God created you. Are, you are a magnificent creature, each and every one of you. You have been uniquely designed by God for greatness. I don't care what anybody has told you. God designed you right now for greatness. Right now. Right, not, not tomorrow, yeah. not after you get your degree. Yeah. Right now, God designed you for greatness. God. Thank you. Wow. Ori, God designed you for greatness. Right now, right now not, not after you get your education. Right, right now, God designed you for greatness. Right now. But when I understand the law of faith, I can become all that God designed me to be. Yeah. Right? See, that's, we are waiting for the sweet by and by. And God is saying, no, right now in the here and now. If you learn how to operate in the law of faith, the law of faith, people, it's a law. I'm going to have what I say. It's a law. According to my faith, be it unto me. Right now, it's up to you. Now, I don't mind connecting my faith with your faith. Don't get me wrong. Now, I'm, I'm just telling you that there is a better way. Because even if I were not here and you understood the law of faith and operated in the law of faith, you can have it without me even touching you. Absolutely, you can have it right now. And you don't have to wait for Pat. Well, I guess I got to wait till Sunday. You can get it on Monday. You can get it on Tuesday. You can get it on Wednesday. You can have what? Look, according to your faith, be it unto you. But you got to understand the law of faith in order to have it. Amen. You got to have the law of faith. Just like gravity exists, the law of faith exists. And it's a law. And it's a law. Yeah, it's a law. And it's going to work for whoever works it. Amen. Don't sit back and watch others who operate in the law of faith and question how did they get it while you had the same opportunity, the same ability to cause those things to come into your life that you desire of God if you just operate the law of faith. Somebody say the law of faith. The law of faith. Now, my... I, I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to begin to hear the word of God. Okay? Now, those of you who are dealing with forgiveness issues, go get the CDs. It's, it's, go, it's two CDs in here, I think. Two. Listen to them so that you can forgive whoever it is you need to forgive. How, how much time do you listen to the radio? A day. How much? How much time? Has it benefited you anything? I mean, you, 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 you know the song now, but ha have, have it changed your life for the better? I mean, ha have it caused a positive reaction in your life? 
Because what you hear is going to affect how you think. So those of you who are operating in unforgiveness right now, you need to go to the bookstore and get forgive, the series on forgiveness. You got to get it. I'm serious. It's going to change how you think about other people. Those of you who feel like you're in the wilderness, I just finished the series on the wilderness experience. You need to go to the bookstore and get a copy of the wilderness experience so that you can learn that it's only a test that you're going through. Even Jesus went through the wilderness. Amen. And he was tested. Amen. The more you hear God's word, the more it changes your life. It changes your life. It changes your life. Because now you begin to operate in what you hear, the law of faith. Amen? And I got to stop because I am out of time. Give God a big hand of praise.